Good afternoon. My name is Benji Wormley. I'm the Director of Recreation for the City of Patterson. And it is a great honor to have a celebration of Larry Doby. On this day, 75 years ago, he not only became an African-American hero, an American hero, by breaking the color barrier of the American League. And at this time, to start our day off right, we had the flag salute by one of the super sluggers from the Silk City All-Stars, Big Time Jacob. I pledge allegiance to the flag, the United States of America, and to the Republic, one stand, one nation, under God, indivisible, the United States, this is for all. Please remain standing as we have Charity Wilder do the national anthem, and after Charity, we will have Leon Moses do lift every voice and sing. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight For the ramparts we watched Were so gallantly streaming And the rockets regular The bombs bursting in That our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star spangled bend our for the land of the free and the home of the brave. Lift every voice and sing Till earth and heaven ring Ring with the harmony of liberty Let our rejoicing rise High as the listening sky Let it resound Loud as the roaring sea, sing a song full of the faith that the dark past has brought us. Sing a song full of the hope that the present has taught us. Facing the rising sun, a new day begun. Let us march on till victory is won. God of our weary years, God of our silent tears, Thou who has brought us far, on our way, thou with thy mighty hands, let us into the light. Let us march on for all of this, we pray. Let our feet 
from the places of God we have met thee. Let our heart drink with the wine that we may not forget thee. Shadow beneath thy hand, we will always stand true to our God. True to our native land. At this time, we're going to actually remain standing as we will have the Reverend Dr. M. Randall Laster from the historic Calvary Baptist Church bless this day. Pastor Laster. Thank you, Assemblyman. Let us pray. Oh, gracious Father, we thank you for we have declared that this is the day that you've made and that we will rejoice and be glad in it. Father, we invoke your presence into this ceremony today, thanking you, Lord, for the not quit spirit in Larry Doby that then transferred, oh God, onto a Greek, to a, to a people and unto a nation. Thank you that this day we come to celebrate what you have placed inside of him, that others and children will see that, and we speak life in their future, O oh God, that they will be groundbreakers and trailblazers. Thank you, Lord God, for all who have assembled this day, those, O oh God, who, who, who advocate, those who legislate, those who fight, those who coach, and those who teach. Thank you, Lord God, for putting something inside of us to push on, to keep going, to hit the home run. So, Father, on this day, we thank you for the life, the legacy, Larry Doby. We thank you, Lord God, that it lives on through the children, through the coaches, the teachers, through the people who make things happen. So we thank you for this opportunity to gather one more time, this opportunity to see friends and family, to celebrate, and to never forget our history. Now, Father, we thank you for everything that you've done. And Father, we thank you for everything that you're going to do. But Father, we thank you most of all just for being God. In Jesus' name, amen. At this time, you can be seated, please. Thank you. Uh, we're going to bring, we're going to have greetings and acknowledgments by Mayor Andre Saya. And for the young people out here, and particularly some of the young workers, 20 years ago, yeah. on this day, 2002, we dedicated this field to Larry Doby. And Andre was working for the Division of Recreation at that time, and he was the host of the Rec Show. 20 years later, he is now the mayor of the city of Patterson. So hope is here in the city of Patterson, definitely. <laughs> If you could rise from recreation and become the mayor, you could be anything you want to be. And there's one person who is not here, but we have to acknowledge, that's Joe Tobb. Joe Tobb's vision of this field was uh, unbelievable. He did not care what the cost was going to be to get this done. If you were here in 2000, you knew the field faced the other way. You know, it was a sandy, hill trap type of baseball field. I was the baseball coach at the time at Eastside High School. Joe said, let's make it what's best for anything. And then when he added the statue, the statue says it all. But Joe and his family continue to be great friends to the city of Patterson. They still sponsor the Tall Doby Basketball League going on 25 years. And like I said, those same folks have gone on to be NBA players, college players. And thanks to Joe, thanks to Larry, thanks to their vision, this continues. But at this time, we have the mayor of the city of Patterson, Mayor Andre Sam. Good morning, Patterson. Good morning. Good morning. Larry Doby was second to none. In fact, he was the first African-American to play in the American League. First African-American to win, along with Satchel Paige, the World Series. First African-American to hit a home run in the World Series. First African-American to hit a home run in the Major League Baseball All-Star Game. So you see the, the, the theme here, the trend, second to none. In fact, when he came up, Coach Wimberly, he was a second baseman. But there wasn't room for him. And so in order to make room for his talent, he played center field. 
Again, second to none, even though he wasn't a second baseman like he was developing in the Negro Leagues. And also the first African-American goes straight from the Negro Leagues to the major leagues. Jackie Robbins, who broke the color barrier on April 15, 1947, had one year of minor league experience under his belt. Larry Doby on July 4th, 1947, was playing for the Newark Eagles, and it was a doubleheader. He didn't play in the second game because they told him in the first game, you're going to the major leagues tomorrow. Didn't give him enough time to prepare himself for what was to come. But as we all know, he was ready. He was ready. He was ready for the racial slurs that were coming his way. He was ready for the hate. He was ready to integrate the American League. In fact, there are stories of when he arrived in the clubhouse, some of his teammates didn't want to shake his hand. In fact, two of his teammates turned their backs on Larry Doby. There was an instance where he was sliding into second base and the shortstop spat on him, and it was tobacco juice that he spat on him. So Larry Doby, a legend, a man who served his country in the United States Navy, a trailblazer in America, deserves more than just a day. And so we celebrate 42, but we also celebrate 14 as well. And Coach, you're right. June 1st, 2002 was the first and only time that I met Larry Doby. And my impression of him coming away from gentlemen like Larry Doby, humble, he was as humble as they come, but never forgot where he was from because I can make the argument, I'm sure Coach Wimberly can make the argument, Congressman, you can make the argument, probably the most successful athlete ever to come out of Patterson, especially Eastside High School, where he started in four sports, because the coach always corrects me. Baseball, basketball, football, and track. Speaking of track, we owe it to him to bring Hinchliffe Stadium back. And we are. Hinchliffe Stadium, by A. Wilson, where is he? Should be back on track later this year, barring any unforeseen circumstances. But we owe it to him because that's where he had a tryout. And so today we celebrate a gentleman who integrated ballparks that Jackie Robinson couldn't. We celebrate one of our own, a Patterson pioneer, a history maker in the United States, Larry Doby, Larry Legend. Now I've been given the unenviable task to acknowledge our special guests. First, I'd like to acknowledge our warrior in Washington, representing us in the 9th Congressional District, the Honorable Congressman Bill Pascrell. who's a Yankee fan, I might add. We all know we'll be back here in October celebrating the Mets' third World Series victory. Yeah, I said it. <laughs> Reverend Randall Lasseter is a Reds fan. He has no right to laugh right now. By the way, he is the pastor of Calvary Baptist, historic Calvary Baptist Church, Reverend Pastor Moses, Randall La Moses Lasseter. Give him another round of applause. Our assemblyman, our coach, Director of the Division of Recreation, Benji E. Wimberly. Yeah. From the Patterson Municipal Council, the Dean, longest serving and former mayor, current councilman for the Fourth Ward, Ruby N. Cotton. Ruby. Recently reelected and sworn in councilwoman at large, Dr. Lalisa Mims. Mims. Democratic candidate for mayor in Haldon, Michael Johnson. <laughs> Deputy Mayor Maria. Pilar Rivas, our county friends, and I mean friends, because we need open space funding for more parks in Patterson. <laughs> county Commissioner Terry Duffy, yes. Terry. County Commissioner Pat Lapore. I saw our Sheriff, Sheriff Richard H. Burdnick, along with Under Sheriff Nart Hapasha. We have a friend a new friend, and we're happy that he's here, leading an outstanding institution of higher learning. I'm going to go beyond calling him a friend. He's a partner in progress in Patterson. That is the president of Montclair State University, Dr. Jonathan Capel. We have from WFAN, Danielle McCartan. Thank you, Danielle. 
NJ Monkley, Gary Phillips is here too. And it goes without saying, we have with us a friend of ours, gentleman who knew Larry Doby better than any of us, his son, who always remembers Patterson as well, Larry Doby Jr. <laughs> Next to him, yes, another Patterson pioneer. We're very proud of him. As a matter of fact, we have a park named in his honor as well. And Congressman, we asked for about a million dollars to renovate his park, so no pressure. But I'm sure we'll get the funding. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for Johnny Briggs. Johnny! He can still hit a home run. Speaking of former players, we have with us a former member of the New York Metropolitans, Bobby Jones. Thank you, Bobby. He also said the Mets are going to win the World Series. And the New Jersey Jackals, who I think should make... No, don't say it? Okay. Nevertheless, they look good in Patterson, by the way. Friends of Hinchliffe Stadium, Brian Lapinto, thank you for joining us. Patterson Board of Education Commissioner and another big, amazing Mets fan, Manny Martinez. Next to him, another long-suffering Mets fan, the president of the Patterson, Greater Patterson Chamber of Commerce, Orlando Cruz. <laughs> Former councilman for the First Ward, Anthony Ebony Davis. Corporation Council, Eamon Abushi. Our director of the Department of Public Works, Billy Rodriguez. And you heard him earlier from the Copacetics, Leon Moses. We're going to invite you every time to sing every voice, every lift every voice. Director of Public Policy and Planning, Aishia Hayes. Coach, I think that's about it. I told you it was an unenviable task. So thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Actually, before we do that, I do want to present Larry with something real quick. Larry, if you don't mind coming up. And a special thanks goes to Bob Garashi and his team from NJCDC that created these commemorative posters so that we can celebrate the 75th anniversary of Larry Doby Sr. breaking the color barrier in the American League and integrating the AL. So ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the city of Patterson, a place that I'd like to present this to his son, Larry Doby Jr., in honor of the 75th anniversary of this historic achievement and event. Thank you. Coach, anyone else? Okay, I'm gonna turn it back over to Coach Benji E. Wimberly, unless there's other members of the New York Mets that are here. No? The Mets are in the June swoon already. Sorry, Bob. It, it just happens. I, I don't know what the Yankees' record is, uh, com Congressman. Fastest team to 52 in how long? That's all I'm going to say. I won't mention that I'm a Yankee fan. We also have with us Tahiti Boone, who's with the New York Knicks. Tahiti, could please stand up from the New York Knicks. And I know Isaac Gittins from the NFL. Did Isaac make it here yet? No? We have Patterson Finance, the fire department. We love our guys over there. We appreciate them. Guys over here grilling for the kids for our summer camp. Today is the first day of Patterson summer camps. So it's a crazy, crazy day for us. But thanks to the fire department, all those kids are going to have their best lunch of the beginning of the, uh, summer camps ever. We have Daryl Jacobs from ESPN and Patterson. Coach Jacobs. I know we have the full staff of science and technology here. I know Coach, Coach Wimberly and crew, the principal, can you guys please stand, science and technology. Coach Wimberly was the first charter school to ever win a group, a state championship yeah. from Patterson, made it to the TOC. It's something about that last name in W's. That's what I told you. It's a fact. 
But at this time, we do have our council uh, members here with us, and we like them to bring acknowledgments. We have with us our dean, Ruby Cotton, and, and as they said, they come as a one-two punch and are always right on time. And Councilwoman Dr. Lalisa Mims. Come on up, guys. First, let me say good morning to everyone. It is a pleasure, honor for me to be here and to Larry Dovey Jr. I was just looking at a picture this morning. We were in front of um, the courthouse and I can't remember, I think it was honoring you for, I can't remember what it was. But it, Nite, it's an honor for me to be here for 75 years. You know, July 5th, 1947. My Eddie was born June 29th, 1947, 75 years. We broke the barrier. And you know, and we still breaking the barriers. And it's 75 years later. Yes. And we still be the first 75 years. So it's still here for us to break barriers. It's still here. And for all our young people out here, everything is not easy. You have to work hard. You keep the course, you keep the faith, and you will get there. And I think about all the, I'm the 50 babies, 60 babies, 70 babies. So I know what it is to have no one speak to you, to have no one. And I can imagine what he went through, um, being on a bus, being in a locker room. But he stayed his course, because he had faith. And when you have faith, you can get through so many things. And I want to say to be here today, I am so honored to be able to stand here because I stood on his shoulders. Your father, Larry, I, for me to be standing here today, I didn't get here by myself. It was a whole lot of people that helped me to get here. And I always want to say I'm truly grateful and thankful. I think about my ancestors. I think about the families. I've been in Patterson all my life, but it's not easy. And to see you again is an honor. But for me to be sitting here as a councilwoman, as, as um, Assemblyman Wimberley, you know, being there 10 years, it's still a lot of work to get done. And there's still a lot of barriers to break. And you know what? We're going to be on that course to break barriers. I see my neighbor, Johnny Briggs. Yeah. He's not my neighbor no more, but when I first got here, he was my neighbor when I moved on that block. And I say, you know what, it's about neighborhoods, it's about helping, it's about showing, it's about caring. You know, and I say that we all must do that. But for all of you out there, all our young people, continue to break barriers, because they're there for you to break. Continue to do what you need to do. Make everyone proud of you. And that's, I don't care how old you get, you must make everyone proud. So to the Recreation Department, to the city, to Andre, to say our mayor, to DPW, to the fire department, to our congressman, who's fight like I don't know what to get us money. And he gets it, so he must be put on them boxing gloves sometimes. But you know, we are here together, and I want to say it's an honor for me to stand here as a councilwoman, 75 years your father, 75 years, to still be standing here to be able to say, thank God that I'm here, thank you, God bless you all. Thank you all for supporting and coming out and having this great, great, great day. Thank you. <laughs> and so to all the dignitaries that are here, to Larry Doby Jr., Mr. Briggs, I see Coach Macalino in the back. I have to give it out to my gym, gym teacher from School 21 and to everyone that's here. Um, today is an amazing, amazing day. July 5th, 1947. A hero was born, mm -hmm. an icon was born in Camden, South Carolina. For whatever reasons, his parents felt it necessary that he needed to move here to Patterson and live with his grandparents, his grandmother. What a blessing that was. Whatever she felt could not happen in South Carolina, she knew it would happen in Patterson. We are blessed to know the likes of Larry Doby. We are blessed to know individuals that break barriers and make sure no's are not always a no, that we can break through them. Yeah. We're also 
amazed because when we think of projects like Hinchcliffe Stadium, when people thought it would not happen, to see it being re rehabilitated and to see what is going to happen there, it reminds me another time that all no's are not necessarily a no. I remember moving on my block over 21 years ago and my neighbor said to me, this block is important because Larry Doby used to live on this block. <laughs> they always remind us of yeah. that. And one person in particular, Assemblyman Wembley always says, we have to know our history. Yep. So three years ago, we made a proclamation to declare July 5th yep. as Larry Doby Day in the city yes. of Patterson. Yes, we did. And it was unanimously approved. Right. So thank you to Larry Doby Jr. Thank you to your father and his legacy, and thank you because we stand upon his shoulders. It's yep. a great day for your dad. It's yep. a great day for our city, and it's a great day for people of color. God bless you, and God, God bless, bless the great city of Patterson. So if they're batting one and two, we already win in 10 nothing. But we have to acknowledge our former commissioner, great city advocate. She was the first person here today, Wahida Muhammad. Wahida, please stand up. Wahida is going to be batting cleanup in the charity softball game at the end of this. So Wahida, get your uniform ready. We appreciate you. Next up, we have our congressman who represents us, as been said many times, Congressman Bill Pasquarell, Jr. You know, uh, Camden, South Carolina is a great town. That's where Larry came from. In a few minutes, I'm leaving to go to Camilla Jeter's wake and funeral. And Camilla was my secretary when I was the mayor. She's from Camden, South Carolina. And the guy I work for, He's a third-ranking Democrat in the Congress, Jimmy Clyburn, who's probably one of the greatest men I personally met with John, John Lewis. So Camden has a great history, but Larry, Larry came here to Patterson, and I remember playing in the first game when he was just kicking around, Uncle Sam's and Sheba Florist played that day, Larry, Larry Jr. And I was playing in the left field, and Larry Doby was playing as just the performance for Uncle Sam's baseball team. He hit a ball up on the third terrace. And I was playing, I had the great fortune of playing third left field. And as the ball rolled down the hill, and I went to get it, I guess he could have turned the bases at least three times by the time I got the ball. But that's a pretty good shot. Larry Doby is an icon in our city. I've lived here all my life. I have never seen the respect that folks had for him from all parts of this city. And at that time, in 1947, this is a pretty segregated city. But in 1947, on July 5th, Larry Doby broke into the American League. What an asset to baseball he was. What a great player. Worked with Frank Robinson, the first African-American coach. What a tiger he was, Frankie Robinson. So ladies and gentlemen, I'm, I'm honored here. As Larry knows, we've done a post office named after Larry Doby. A stamp named after Larry Doby. And Larry, the best is yet to come. Because in a few days, a few months, it doesn't matter how long it takes us. It's already been approved. He's going to get the highest award of the United States of America 
and we're figuring out where to do it and how to do it. But we will, Larry. And Larry, your family was always respected because it was a family who meant what they said. And Larry Doby was not an activist as we know that term, what it means today. Larry Doby was Larry Doby. He was a great human being who respected everyone. He believed that everybody was born equal. That's the test, not anything else. So we pray for his family. And we pray for all of you for being here today. And thank you for inviting me, Mayor. You know where I stand on these things. And if you can't fight for your own city, sit down. If you can't fight in Washington, get out. So they'll have to carry me out. So you get a little setback, setback now and then. But as Larry would say, stop complaining and play the game. God bless you, Larry Jr. God bless your family. Great memories. Thank you, Congressman Pasquale. Next, we will have, with reflections, uh, a, a guy who I met, I guess, when we first started talking about Larry Doby Field and everything. Joe Varilla is a walk-in, uh, you know, historian. It's unbelievable. And the history that he's put together on the Silk City Slucker, second and none, uh, first in American League, was uh, phenomenal. People came from all over to see that. But at this time, we'd like to have Joe Varilla come forward. Great day. Anytime we can honor Larry Doby is a great day. Now, the first time I got to meet Larry it was a circuitous route. I was teaching at school four, and I had done a section on Jackie Robinson. It was Black History Month. And when I finished, I thought, well, Jackie's no longer with us, but Larry Doby lives in Montclair. So I spent the good part of the day trying to get a hold of Larry Doby, extremely frustrated, until finally I decided I think I know who has his number. And I thought of Johnny Briggs, who worked for the Department of Rec. Now, I hadn't talked to Johnny in probably 10 years. I called the Rec, got Johnny on the phone. I said, Johnny, it's Joe Brilla. How you doing, man? Patterson, you know. I said, Johnny, you got to do me a favor. I got to get Larry Doby's number. Sure, I got it. So I, he, gave, he gave me the number. I called Larry Doby. I said, is this Larry Doby? He said, hello, is this Mr. Doby? He said, yes. And before you knew it, we made arrangements for Larry Doby to come to school for and speak to my kids. I found out much later that he didn't always do that. So that was kind of something special right off the bat. Well, anyway, he came, he came to see my kids. He sat down. I was unable to breathe. I couldn't believe that my childhood hero was sitting next to me. Matter of fact, I brought my camera, never took a picture. And the only thing I remember, he said to my students, study your history. Right. And I have been doing that ever since. I don't know about my students, but I did everything I could to learn about Larry Doby. Uh, most of his history was hidden. His friends in Patterson never knew what he was going through to be first in the American League. They didn't know about the racial epithets that he heard on a daily basis, the tobacco juice spit in his face. <clears throat> they didn't know about he couldn't sleep in hotels or eat with his teammates, that he spent most of his time alone. But he persevered, he was determined, and now we are here today because of him. He has changed the world, not just Patterson, not just the United States, the world. I had many conversations with Mr. Doby throughout the years. He would invite me to his home. We had long conversations about the issue of race. I remember one time I left his house. He was well in his 70s at the time, and he said, Joe, and he rubbed one finger against his hand. He said, I'll never understand how people could hate you. 
for the color of your skin. I just stood there. I didn't know what to say. I don't know what to say today, frankly, about that. But I think we moved along. He was always proud that when he looked around, he saw things had changed. He always looked forward. It's funny that Satchel Page had that don't look back. Well, Larry had it too. He always looked forward. Things were always positive. He only spoke of the players who helped his career. He never spoke of the people who didn't shake his hand or were not friendly. So anyway, uh, I'm extremely proud to have been part of Larry Doby's life, uh, to, to know about him, to have met his son, Larry Doby Jr., who's an incredible person. And also, right now, I am part of a group of people that are doing research for the new renovated Hinchcliffe Stadium. And two of the people I'm working with, Joe Moore, who was Larry Doby's biographer, and Dave Kaplan, who was the director of the uh, Yogi Berra Museum for many, many years. They're unable to be here today, unfortunately. But they have published an uh, article today in the Chicago Sun Times about Larry Doby. And what we're trying to do is make Larry Doby Day permanent in Major League Baseball. And hopefully, Major League Baseball, who is pretty slow to react to anything, it took them 100 years to recognize the Negro Leagues, took 51 years to get Mr. Doby in the Hall of Fame. He was there all the time. Uh, anyway, we're going to work on this until it happens. Every, every July 5th will be Larry Doby's day in the American League, and hopefully we can get all the players to wear number 14. Amen to Larry Doby. We, we bless him. He blessed us. Thank you. Well, Patterson's gotten a start. Thanks to Mayor Andre Sea and the city council, every city employee and camper has a Larry Doby Day t-shirt on today. So everywhere you'll see in the city of Patterson, Larry Doby stuff, you guys who got yours on your chair, I expect you to put them on after you leave and wear them for the rest of the day. No pressure on you. But, but I can tell you this, uh, Jerry Eisenberg reached out to me recently, Larry, and Jerry's 91 years old, and we talked for almost two hours on the phone about your dad. The great part was it was a rainstorm. He's out in, I, I want to say, Vegas, and he goes, I can't be here today, but I want to let you know I'm working on a book on Larry Doby. So he's getting ready to do another book on Larry Doby, and I go, look, I'll sit here, I put the speaker on, and I just listen. I wish more of our people who are from Patterson now would sit and listen. It's unfortunate that many elected officials and other leaders in their city are not here, because if they don't know this history, they can't lead this city. So, yes, Mayor, yes. make sure you put this on Channel 77, and maybe they'll watch it. And, I, and hopefully I offended a couple of people, because at this point now, you know, I, I need to offend people because they can't say that they love Patterson and care about Patterson and don't know the history of Patterson. But at this time, a big part of Patterson is coming back. And I, I could say I was the head baseball coach at Eastside High School in 1997. We won the last game played at Hinchcliffe Stadium. We beat Passaic for the league championship. Yeah. And the stadium is coming back. One of our own sons, Baye Adafo Wilson, is the developer. And he's going to come up and give us an update on Hinchcliffe Stadium. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I, um, I had the pleasure of uh, actually going to high school with the Assemblyman. And I, as I tell people, he's been a star the entire time. He's a star when he's a little boy, as a grown man, as an Assemblyman, he's been a star. But he's been a star, a uh, class act the entire time. So let's give him a round of applause for putting this together, because this is a great event. Also, when I want to acknowledge the Councilwomen, uh, Kai and the Mims, uh, friends and colleagues, I really think that they're amazing. So it's just really good. They've been supporters of the project. And really without them, we, you know, their votes, we wouldn't be where we're at now. Um, I often sort of just think, uh, uh, you know, July 5th is an important date in my family. I have, my mother has two sisters born on July 5th. You know, my Aunt Loretta and my Aunt Lorraine. And so it's always been a day of celebration in my family. And I was talking to Charity earlier today, because my grandmother's named Charity. And I just sort of think of, 
where would we have been without Larry Doby? You know, in, in baseball, just in life, like what would this country be like um, if it wasn't for Larry Doby and people like Larry Doby? Um, we are ex in the midst of experiencing a backlash now. Whether you're looking at voting rights, or you look at issues around abortion, the, the politics of this country is changing today. And they fought that back then, 75 years ago. So what it lets you know is that this struggle is continuous and ongoing. And that we all have to continue, you know, sort of do our part. I'm sort of just thankful for being having the capacity to work on the project as important as Hitchcliffe in, in the town that I grew up in. I mean, I, ran, I didn't play football, but I ran track. So I ran youth games and I ran track against Eastside and Kennedy. So I, I too participated in it and ran on that track on Hitchcliffe Stadium. But the notion that it's sort of, you know, every generation sort of passes the baton. And, you know, where will we be if that baton hadn't been, you know, and we, have, and we have in our history, we know those stories. We know the stories of lynching. We know the stories of, of police brutality. We know all those stories of violence. But we know that there were people like Larry Doby who stood up to that, who, whether it's in silence or at, on loud, but was able to do it so that we can be here at this moment, not just celebrating him, but in a space where we have options and opportunities. There's no... Um, Brown versus Board of Education without Larry Doby. Um, there's no, you know, there's, I mean, there's no LeBron. There's no Michael Jordan. There's none of that. None of that exists without Larry Doby. Because people, they really didn't expect, they didn't really acknowledge the, the greatness of the athleticism. A four-star athlete probably could have played professional sports in any of all, but had the opportunity in baseball and did this. So for us, in terms of Hinchcliffe, we're moving forward. We're about 70% done with the stadium. As you guys may or may not know, it's, it's Hinchcliffe Stadium, which is, uh, was insignificant damage. has been closed for 25 years. But um, we are, at this point, um, about the, the parking garage is about 75% done, maybe 80% done. The housing is about 60% done. The stadium is about 70%, 75% done. We look to be done this year. Um, we plan on opening um, in the spring. Uh, it's been a, you know, it's been an amazing project. Um, we have people who come by the stadium all the time, who talk about their parents and grandparents from Patterson, but also from out the region. You know, people who live in Wayne and Heldon and Pompton Lakes, who they may have been the away team, didn't go to the East Side of Kennedy at all, but they were the away team who played um, in, in Patterson, and it was the biggest game for them. They weren't playing in stadiums in Pompton Lakes. They weren't playing in stadiums. They came to Patterson and played in the stadium. So that regard, they, they too are um, hopeful and excited and looking forward to the stadium um, reopening. Um, but it really is a testament to the strength and the, of all the people here. Um, you know, one of the things that I like to say, I close, one of the things that was, I, I think that's so amazing about Larry Doby is that you had teams like the New York Black Yankees and the New York Cubans playing in Patterson when he's in high school or, uh, and, and the New York Eagles, that so you have an active Negro League um, Negro League teams playing here during those years. And, you know, it has to be an inspiration to be able to just walk across town and watch a professional team and say, I can be like that person. And that's really what, I, you know, hopefully we're able to bring back so that, you know, these kids can go to Hinchcliffe Stadium and say, you know, I want to play football like this person. I want to run track like that person. I want to play soccer like this person. I want to play baseball like that person. But they can see it in someone that lives down the street or around the corner or across town. Because, you know, the, the, the place for us to play are far and few between, and we just need more of them. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Okay, I, I'd really be remiss if I didn't allow Brian Lapinto to come and say a few words. Brian. I met years ago, same thing, knew everything about Hinchcliffe, knew everything about Larry Doby. I think we've been to every ceremony, anything that was Larry Doby, I think I've been at everything for the last 20 something years. But Brian, come up and say a few words. Thank you very much. I, I can't imagine how Larry Doby must have played in a wool uniform on a day like today. So um, first I wanna say thank you to Larry Doby Jr. for inviting me here today. Larry, I've known you for so long now. It's a pleasure to call you friend and, and really get to know uh, the Doby family. And thank you, Benji, also for inviting me uh, here today as well. So it's July 5th, 1947 that we're celebrating, and it's a very important day. But I might argue that there might be a more important day. And that was something that occurred in the summer of 1942, just on the other side of town, when a fresh-faced Larry Doby, fresh from graduating high school, 
was offered a tryout with the Newark Eagles of the Negro Leagues. Now imagine that day being different. Imagine Dobie didn't hit well, had a fever, pulled a hamstring. We're not here celebrating July 5th. So that day at Hinchliffe Stadium in 1942, which occurred before a Negro Leagues game, the Newark Eagles were in town to play the New York Black Yankees, and the way the story goes is that there was a Negro League umpire named Henry Moore. And Henry Moore was friends with Abe Manley, who was the owner of the Newark Eagles. So I can imagine a conversation, hey, you know, Abe, you're, you're going to be in town anyway. Why don't you see this kid, Dobie? And of course, in typical Dobie form, hit well, threw well, fielded well, and the rest, as they say, is history. But it's really important to acknowledge that in life there are these moments in time that can change the course of history. And really, that date in 1942 changed Larry Doby's life forever. And it's important for us to remember him because whether it be Newark or Cleveland or Cooperstown, Larry Doby always remembered Patterson, and Patterson should always remember Larry Doby. And, and I'll leave you with two things. As great of a ball player as Larry Doby was, it pales into comparison as to the father he was, as evident by Larry Doby Jr. and his sisters. And as they say, behind every great man, there's a great woman. Of course, Helen Doby was his rock throughout all the years, whether it be in Newark, Cleveland, and of course, the Baseball Hall of Fame, which was your sister's birthday that day. Um, I, I just think that we just have to continue to move forward and I'm hopeful that with the rehabilitation of Hinchliffe Stadium, that we as a society can stay. Jackie Robinson and Larry Doby integrated baseball, broke the color barrier, whatever you want to say about that. So in closing, I want to close with something from one of Larry Doby's great friends, Yogi Berra. Thank you for making this day necessary. We'd also like to acknowledge former councilman of the third ward, Bill McCoy, yeah. and Mrs. McCoy, who was always by his side. And we have the uh, business administrator from the Patterson Public Schools, uh, Richard Leon Matthews, a great baseball player in his own right. And I see his right-hand man intern, James Jordan, one of the bright stars from the city of Patterson, college student at Benedict College, a senior this year, and learning from the best. Good job, James. We're proud of you. Uh, we also have, I saw earlier, Scott Dorham, the athletic director of Kennedy High School. And we have the athletic director of Eastside High School, T.J. Hill. Now, the great thing about T.J. Hill is, T.J. is one of my former players. T.J. and Sean Seabrooks could not catch Larry, but they were both 10-sport ten, ten varsity letter winners at Eastside High School. T.J. and Sean both lettered... Uh, four times in baseball, three times in basketball, and three times in football. And I don't even know if they make three sports sport, uh, stars anymore, but for him to come back now as a former player and to be the athletic director, I think that's a great accomplishment. Sandy Mack, you take some of the credit for that. Coach Mack, School 21, always representing. And, and the great part of that is that same year, that team went to the uh, Hall of Fame when Mr. Doby got uh, inducted into the Hall of Fame. We took a bus from Eastside High School with around 40 kids, myself, Felix Gill, who's an assistant coach doing film today, uh, photography, and we went up to Cooperstown. And to this day, kids remember, who are grown men now, do you remember you took me to the Hall of Fame? And we were so loud back there. We were way back there, Larry. But Patterson was in the house the day that Mr. Doby, there he is, TJ Hill, TJ, raise your hand. TJ played for me, he was the first baseman at Eastside, now he's the athletic director of Eastside High School, but he was a 10, 10 varsity letter winner himself in Sean Seabrooks, which is very rare. Now, Mr. Doby also, when we won the county championship, arranged for us to get new uniforms through Joe Todd. So Chauncey Brown, senior, calls me to his house, and as you know, Chauncey's uh, 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 wife and, and your mom are sisters, and they gave me the whole family history of our families lived on 12th Ave at the same time, and gave me the whole rundown. Then I went to your house, and I started going to your house to sit in a meeting with your dad. And before I knew it, we started talking about the field. And that same year, we won the county championship. Only God could put you in a position that I could sit down, me from Patterson, and talk to Larry Doby, and then go out to lunch to Pals in West Orange, the bonfire 
before they fancied it up a little bit when it was the old bonfire. And, and we uh, used to go over there for lunch. And, and our favorite spot during the holidays was the River Palm and River Edge where, you know, Joe Tobb and he would bring the whole crew of NBA guys, everybody to have dinner. And, and Larry, on behalf of myself, and you see these kids out here, we thank you. We thank your mom, your, your brothers, your sisters, and particularly the family for sharing your dad with us and his legacy. And, and the one quote I found about your dad I think is appropriate for this day as we bring you up is, is really says it all. Kids are our future. And we hope baseball has given them some ideas of what it is to live together and how we can get along, whether you are black or white, Larry Doby. And I think that quote is so fitting. And that's what it said about his relationship with Joe Tobb and those, oh my God, those arguments they used to have was unbelievable. On 911, we were in a bonfire and they were arguing about politics. And it was unbelievable. At the end of the day, they just hugged, walked away, and laughed. But that was your dad in a nutshell. And his relationship with Joe says, I think, everything about the real Patterson. So at this time, without further ado, we have Larry Doby Jr. Yes. Oh my goodness. Ladies and gentlemen, it is an uh, extreme pleasure to be here today. This is where it all started for my father in Patterson, New Jersey. He was a, a public school student like many of you guys, and he dreamed, and this is where we are today after 75 years you know, of today of him breaking the colored barn. And there's so many people I'd like to thank. I know I'm going to forget somebody, so I apologize first for forgetting whoever I did. My father didn't do it alone. Nobody does anything in life alone. Everybody needs a little help from time to time. Please remember that, guys. My father was very uh, keen on education and communication. He felt like that was the key to all of us getting along, getting to know each other better, and, and basically succeeding in life. So think about this. You're sitting in the same schools and classrooms that he sat in, and then he became the first African-American to play in the American League. It, it, it can happen. Please, people, do not fall short of your dreams. Don't sell them short. Patterson is where it began for him. That's where he met my mother. And other than God and maybe Mr. Vec, that was the most important person in him succeeding. That was his rock, as Benji has said. And she had 10, there were 10 kids that all came from Patterson. All my sisters and myself were born here. They made sure of that. And he never forgot Patterson, and, and that's why we're here today. So there was... Um, a player before my father, Charlie Jamison. There was a player after my father, John Briggs. And there was a few others. I'm sure I'm forgetting some of the pros, but Patterson's history is rich, very rich in athletics and baseball and basketball, football, and just in, in people that have contributed to the society. Be proud of that, please, people. And another thing I'd like to say is that when he was growing up, what he wanted to do with his life after he graduated high school was he wanted to become a coach and a teacher. So think about that. That's why he was able to succeed because coaches and teachers took time and they gave him confidence and they, they made sure that you know, he knew that you know, he could be as good as he could be. And to me that says so much that if a person wants to become what he was exposed to, what kind of effect did that have on him? The teachers and the coaches that enabled him to succeed on the field and in the classroom are the ones that he wanted to emulate. And then luckily, in 1945, Jackie Robinson signs, and then in 1947, Larry Doby signs. So again, guys, I'd like to thank everybody that made this day necessary, possible. And um, I'd just like to say he loved Patterson. It was his roots, he didn't forget it. I hope you guys never forget him because he never forgot you. And I wish you guys all the best. Please keep working hard in school. And um, hopefully we'll be here in another 25 years, hopefully. So thank all of you guys. I'm getting old. It would be sooner than 25, I'll tell you that. Uh, but we also have some acknowledgments. As we said, we thank the Patterson Fire Department for feeding our kids today. You're going to have hot dogs. We have the brownstone, thanks to uh, Baye Wilson, who was going to have our tent. So at the end of the program, please come to the white tent to the left. Uh, everybody with a field pass, we have a special lunch for you. Um, we also want to thank Bob Garachi. Bob came up with this rendition of this poster here, and everybody's asking me, can I have one? I didn't do this. Oh, I 
can't give you one. I can't. But Bob did those uh, posters, and we're going to make sure that, you know, those, the mayor is going to make sure everybody who needs to get one, I'll put a little pressure on the mayor. See the mayor. That's right. That's right. But Bob's a, a great supporter from NJCDC. But that's one of the better renditions I've, I've seen. The color scheme is unbelievable. Um, so at this time, Mayor, we're going to uh, close out. We thank you for coming out on behalf of the city of Patterson, Division of Recreation, our staff, DPW, uh, uh, Billy Rodriguez and his crew. Uh, we appreciate you coming out. Please enjoy some of the festivities. We have games starting at 1 o'clock and 3 o'clock. Uh, uh, Patterson Johnny Briggs League, it's called the Johnny Briggs League, used to be the Pony League. We have two games. Each player will wear number 14, and we'll have Doby on our back today. So if you want to come around at some point today, we have two games after this from the Patterson Old Timers Youth Baseball League, and every kid will wear number 14 Doby today. So thank you and appreciate it. Mayor? So ladies and gentlemen, once again, I want to thank you for being a part of this historic event. I want you to go out and tell people what we learned today about Larry Doby, what everyone should know about Larry Doby, and what we should do in Major League Baseball. I would like for them to retire the number 14. I'd like the American League to commemorate Larry Doby like we do with Jackie Robinson. And take a trip to Cleveland and see his statue in front of the ballpark and see what they've done to pay tribute to him. But in Patterson, we're proud of an Eastside High School Hall of Famer, a Major League Baseball Hall of Famer. And I'm going to go on the record as saying he was a Hall of Fame human being as well. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us. Enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you, Coach Wimberley.